So, uh, let me, excuse me one second, and I'm going to take this off of the internet and put it on my phone. Okay, there we go. So, anyway, uh, I'm in Texas, and, uh, it, it's nice to be out amongst people again. And uh, next week I'll be in South Carolina with uh, some more friends of the ministry in, in uh, Perry, South Carolina, Perry Baptist Church. So if you're in that area of Columbia and Aiken and even Augusta, Georgia area, it's not that bad a drive. So if you can make it over uh, this coming Sunday morning, I believe it starts at 10, and then we'll do a special Sunday evening service at 6. But thank you guys so much for your support of the ministry. Thank you for chiming in on these videos. And I'm not trying to get my name out there. I'm trying to get the word out there. So if you can share these videos around, would be great. And I am running behind this morning. So I told you last week was going to be a quickie. This may be even uh, more of a quick one but uh i i got up this morning thinking what uh, lord what do you want me to give the people and i i was reminded of something uh that honestly i had forgot i taught it some years ago but uh, i am a grace person uh and and that just means i'm i'm understanding who i am in christ not by my works but by his and so uh, I, was, I was drawn over to the passage in 1 Peter, the fourth, fourth chapter, the 10th verse, uh, where the apostle said, be stewards of grace. Well, steward in, in my upbringing in church, a steward, you know, when we taught or was taught, and even for years I taught stewardship as uh, a lot of people think of it as dealing with money. Oh, I want to be a good steward of his money, of his money. But that word steward in 1 Peter 4.10 is not a verb. It's a noun. It, it actually means that's a person or a place, a thing that uh, owns something. Well, Mark, what do I own? Jesus said, I give you my power. You own the power of God in your life. And that may be hard for some of you to swallow this morning, but you own the power of God. Uh, own it as in you didn't create it, but you are a steward of it. So we have the power of God. But what is the power of God? See, that's an open-ended question, and everybody has their own ideology of what the power of God is about. But stewardship is not a work of the flesh. It is a identification, an identifying mark of the Spirit of God in you. A steward in the Scripture is a person that uh, acts as a surrogate for another, okay? You are a surrogate of God in the earth. Uh, stewardship, and I know I'm going through this methodically and so quickly, um, watch this again, but stewardship is an ethic and it embodies the planning or management of resources so God has given us resources, and stewardship is managing those resources. Uh, a steward is, if I were to give a definition, a steward, an actual steward, is not someone who uses money God blessed them with to go buy a boat or buy a new car. A good steward is literally a responder of grace, okay? Stewardship is simply the place where faith, 
hope and love intersect to announce a presence. That's what stewardship is. Stewardship is as ownership of the power of God. And again, when I say ownership, it's not your power. It's his power, but it's his power working in you. You know, I did not create this rental, rental vehicle. Let me back it up. I have a vehicle. I did not create it, but I now own it. Ford created my vehicle. And for all my Chevy fans, um, sorry. <laughs> but grace is simply, and, and a lot of people misconstrue what grace is. Grace is defined as, as this. It is God's divine influence on your heart or the consciousness of man. And so grace is simply the privilege to manage, maintain, and reveal the spirit of love in every aspect of our being. So when Jesus said in Matthew 10, 8, that to heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons, that is what a steward does. Now, in my Pentecostal upbringing, that was all literal. But if you know me, I teach the Bible according to 1 Corinthians 15, 46, first in the natural, then the spiritual. So what does it mean to steward grace? Because we have been given grace, and grace is simply the right to claim the power of God as your own not by your works, but by his works on the cross. And so in Matthew 10, 8, Jesus said, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, and cast out devils. Now, you can take that literal and you'll end up frustrated when you pray for somebody and they don't get healed physically. You can take that literally if you lay your hands on a dead person and they don't come back to life. If you take that literally, you'll think you did something wrong or you just don't have the faith or the power to do it. But God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. He gave us all the same ownership. And so to be a steward of grace is to heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, and I'm seeing you guys chime in, and and oh, if I don't mention you, it's because I'm I'm focused on something else. Excuse me, I'm really uh, not that good at all this technology, but uh, I I just want to show you. Maybe today you can mark in your life. I'm going to start stewarding my grace. We've been more concerned about stewarding money as Christians then we have stewarding grace. And stewarding money, yes, that's important. Very important, I take nothing from that. But that is not what the scripture is talking about. So if a pastor was to say, I'm gonna start a 12 month series on stewardship, you may just already have the idea that, uh, you know, I watch my money. But stewardship doesn't just have to do with money. It has to do with healing the sick, cleansing the leper, raising the dead, and casting out devils. Now, let's take that from the natural and let's put it in the spirit. To heal the sick, uh, the word sick in the Hebrew is called law. It means heal the grieved people the ones that condemn themselves, the ones that feel guilty, they walk in guilt, always trying to make up for what they've done in their past. And, and if that's the way you wanna live, you live your own life. But that's, healing the sick is, is not just laying hands on a person that is lame 
and seeing them walk. Some people are sick in their minds and sick doesn't mean they're deranged. It means they've let the natural take over the spiritual identity. And so when Jesus said, heal the sick, anytime I tell somebody, hey, baby, your past is your past. Let's just move on from here. You can't change the past. You can only move on with your future. You have just healed the sick. When you tell someone, and, and Jesus got in trouble for this, but remember, do you hear me? Remember, you shall receive power. And he gave us the power. What is the power? Heal the sleep, sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. You have the power to say to someone, you are forgiven. It wasn't your forgiving power. You're only a surrogate that he has forgiven you, okay? And when the word says cleanse the leper, what is a leper in, in the Bible? Leprosy in the natural was little white spots like cancerous spots, little white spots all over your body. It would just eat at you. That's the natural. But in the spiritual, leprosy is simply the acknowledgement of failures that disqualifies a person from feeling they're even worthy to participate in a life of peace. To cleanse a leper is to declare the works of Christ that he made them clean. Did I make them clean? Did you make them clean? No, but we have the power now as a surrogate to declare clean. And so you run into somebody from today on and they're talking about how much wrong they've done in their life and how they wish they could have done this. You know what? You've already been forgiven. Why don't you just start thinking brand new? Little things like that and the Holy Spirit to tell you what to say to them. And then he says, raise the dead. Well, if you take that in the natural, I've, I've had friends and I know people that, and, and I, I, I've had the dead raised literally, but not every time, you know, not every time. Um, but raising the dead in the scripture is different from raising the dead in the natural. Now, I believe in that, don't, don't get me wrong. But when you literalize the scripture, you can get off into a fallacy where you end up frustrated at God. Well, Mark, how do I know if what I believe is not true? Then you get frustrated. Frustration comes when truth has been eluded, okay? And so to raise the dead means to awaken their thoughts from the dead. Well, what's it mean to be dead in the scripture? It means to be separated from the knowledge of having a relationship with God. And so when you tell somebody he still loves you, nothing's changed God's mind about you, then that's when you have raised the dead. And that's what this ministry is about, raising the dead. And I, I, again, I'm not talking about someone who is physiologically dead. I am talking about people who have given up on their dreams because they feel like their, their past has excluded them. And then he said, cast out devils. Well, to cast out in the original language means to pull out or send away. A devil is simply the descended fallen thoughts of a man. So watch this. Here's how you steward grace. Four things. Heal the sick. Encourage people. Cleanse the leper. Encourage people. Don't bring your convictions to them. Bring your Christ to them. 
The works of Christ are all we are called to minister. That's the reason Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light because he knew what he was called to do was going to be just to teach the goodness that he was going to bring through his death, burial, and resurre resurrection. So, watch. These are the works of the law of life. Now, I am a grace teacher. I don't believe living the law of Moses saves you. I do not. Uh, I do not rely on my works. But in the circle that I travel and minister, uh, many of my grace friends think if you mention works, whew, some of them immediately shut you off or I'm free from works. You're not free from works. You're free from the works of the law. But there is a new law in the new covenant, study it out, that it's called the law of life. And there are four laws of life. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, and cast out demons. Encourage, expound, and God will give you those moments. He will give you those moments. And so, uh, let me finish up with this. And like I said, this is, this is a quick one because I've got to get to service. But in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the 14th through the 17th verse, and you can read it later, or you can... Uh, you can read it yourself, go back and watch this. But here's what he says, and I'll give you a synopsis of it. In the 14th verse, he said, awake from sleeping. Well, what does it mean to sleep in the scripture? To remain ignorant of what he's done for you. So we shall not all sleep. We shall not all remain ignorant of the works of Christ, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. The twinkling of the eye in the Hebrew concept and culture was the change of perception. The twinkling of an eye is not just the batting of the eye. It is a change of the way you look at things. He said, awake from sleeping, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you that light. He'll reveal things to you. How do I awake from the dead? Get over yourself. I, I don't know how else to say that, and that's pretty simple. But just get over yourself. See then that you walk circumspectly, which just means exactly as, not as fools. What does it mean to be a fool? To be selfish and unwise. But walk as you're wise. Walk around not just saying, I'm a grace person, and I'm free no matter what. Saying you're a grace person means you have the authority to heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, and cast out devils. I hope this is helping you. And he said, redeem the time because these days are confusing. And do not be unwise. Who is a fool in the new covenant? the one that thinks they're only called to steward money and not grace. We are stewards of grace. Go steward your grace today. Steward your grace this week. Why did God give you that job? Why are you in that family? Why did this happen? Why did that? Because he wanted someone who owns his power to steward his love by healing the sick, helping those that are grieving with condemnation, raising the dead, those that are buried up and don't believe they deserve better, cleanse the leper, those that constantly it eats at them, who they used to be, what they've done wrong in the past, and cast out devils, bring thoughts to them that's going to cancel out 
the condemning thought. So that's how you steward grace in the scripture. So are we stewards of grace? Yeah, we are. We weren't given grace just for us. We were given grace to give to other people. And guess what? As you give, it will be given back to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And so that was a quick word. I hope it helped you. Again, thank you for your support so very much. That's how I travel, and, and that's how the ministry gets out, is your support. And if you've never supported the ministry, just go to markshellministries.com. If you have any questions, you can email us at uh, contact at markshellministries.com and uh, or markshellministries at gmail.com. And we will respond and give you what we know. So anyway, that's it. You guys have a blessed day. I've got to head out and then fly out. So uh, thank you again for everything. And and don't forget uh, next weekend in, in uh, South Carolina at Perry Baptist Church. And for my friends in South Carolina that's on here watching, uh, I, I know uh, you may have your own home church, but a lot of churches now don't do a Sunday evening service, so we're doing a special Sunday evening as well at 6 o'clock. So if you can come be a part of it, I'd love to see you. And uh, be sure and let me know you're there when you show up. Y'all have a blessed day. And uh, again, pass this around if you don't mind. I would appreciate it. I'll call you blessed. And I call you the proud owner of grace. You didn't create it. You were only called to steward it. So go be a grace person. Blessings.